Hello, hello! Welcome back to DIY with Diamond Taco. First and foremost, thank you guys for being here. I'm super happy to be back, super happy that you're here with me. I cannot believe it's been almost a year. Next time I want to take an extended vacation, I'm gonna need someone to remind me how complex this editing software is. <laughs> Seriously, I had to relearn both my programs almost from scratch. It took forever, but we made it. I also just want to apologize in advance for any weird noises. I'm in a new space and my upstairs neighbor is kind Kind of running laps right now so <laughs> i don't know if you guys can hear that or not but i'll try and edit it out if you can i also just want to apologize for this lighting situation i found some really nice filming lights for like 10 bucks at a thrift store but i didn't find them until after this video so we are rocking in a warm tone today which not that big of a deal but it will be improved in a future videos all right now that we have all of that out of the way let's jump into our video today we are going to be making a quick clip halter i found this quick clip on etsy by night star custom tax they had a ton of different colors but i went with black because yeah it is a hard plastic which i was excited for because i hate how cold metal gets in the winter also shameless little self plug here we're going to be using the eight strand halter pattern from my book diy mule tape tack for most of our measurements. There will be two little change ups, the first being the second loop we need and then the second being the detached pull strap. So to start we're gonna need four strands cut at 11 feet each. We're gonna put a knot at the three foot mark. The three foot side is going to be our right cheek piece and our second loop and the eight foot side is going to be our the start of our noseband and our right cheek and all through all that good stuff. Next, we'll need another four strands cut at 10 feet each and we're gonna put a knot at the four foot mark. The four foot side is going to be our right chin piece and the six foot side is going to go straight into our noseband. Just like with our regular eight strand halters, we're gonna knock out the noseband first and for a standard size halter, that should measure out around 12 inches. After the noseband, we're gonna braid out the left chin piece and then the right chin piece. Both of those are going to measure out to seven inches and we always want to double check and make sure that both pieces are the same length before we move on. You do that by folding the noseband in half and making sure they end in the same spot. Now if you're looking at this halter going, those look a little short compared to these measurements. It's because I am making a pony halter and I am giving you the measurements to make a standard horse halter. I am so sorry but you've been bamboozled. Now we're going to move on to the lead rope tie loop and we're going to join all eight strands together and when we do this we're going to notice that two strands from the left side and two strands from the right side are going to want to go forward. Those are the four you want to separate, two from each side. Braid out your lead rope tie loop for eight inches and then you're going to want to flip it from the front towards the back. That is required, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You'll have a wonky halter if you do it the other way. Now here you're gonna wanna thread two strands back through the braided section, and then you can put the other two strands around the outside. This will help keep this section from slipping. Now you can group all eight strands back together into four groups of two strands each. Or honestly, if you're feeling frisky, you could just do a eight strand round braid. Whatever you end up picking, you're gonna braid that out for four inches, separate everything back into two groups of four, and then braid those two sections out for another two inches, and then throw a knot in that bad boy. If you've seen any of my videos before, you know where this is going, but if you're new here, I need you to tighten your knots like it's the last thing on earth you're doing. Welcome to the No Wimpy Knot Club. This is imperative. Suck that knot down. Pull each individual strand with pliers, and then pull and push the knot back and forth until that thing is not moving. And then we're gonna clip our ends and move on to the next part. Seriously though, knots save lives. If you're gonna spend time on anything, make sure it's the knots. You could have a crappy braid, but if your knot's good, the halter will hold for years. Now that we've put our heart, soul, and body into tying that knot, we're gonna move on to the left cheek. This is the one without the knot. Braid that out for nine inches. And now we get to the fun part, adding the quick clip. Now the trick to adding these quick clips is going to be using your four strand round braid like it's a four strand round braid with a core. Now you only need about three to four crosses in this looped part to make this work and then you can just go back into a regular four strand round braid that'll actually lead into our throat piece. 
And I apologize, I don't have a video on a four strand round braid with a core because in halter making, this is the first instance I've actually found a use for this type of braid, but I am positive there is at least one paracord guy on YouTube that has done this braid before. So just search up four strand round braid with a core on YouTube and it should pop up. If for some reason they haven't gotten to it yet, let me know and I will get on that for all you visual learners. Anyway, back to the halter. So now we are going to start into our throat piece and our throat piece is going to be 21 to 22 inches long. After we braid that out, we're going to thread the throat piece through our jaw piece. This is also why I harp on this knot on the jaw piece being done so well, because if a horse happens to sit back, the pressure from that pull strap goes straight into the throat piece, which in turn goes directly onto that knot. So as long as that knot is tight, you don't really have anything to worry about. But if you're sloppy with your knots, there's a, there's a chance that could come loose if a horse sits back. So now we're gonna move over into our last knot. This is gonna be our right cheek piece and we're gonna braid it out for another nine inches. And as always, when we're doing solid mirrored braids, we want to double check that both sides are the same length. Now that we know our cheek pieces are about the same length, we're gonna take two strands from our right cheek piece and we're gonna take two strands from our throat piece and we're gonna go into another four strand round braid for about eight inches. You could make this one a little bit smaller depending on your personal preference. You can clip that section off to the side. Now we're gonna go back to the four strands that we haven't messed with. Here, I want you to braid two, at minimum, two crosses of a four strand round braid. I did four on mine and you're gonna notice it sticks out a bit more than I'd like it to. So then you're gonna wanna tie your knot and you can do whatever knot you want. I'm gonna do a crown knot on this one and then on our other piece, I'm gonna do an overhand knot just so you guys can see kind of the size difference. It's not something there is a crazy difference with, but I like to try my best to keep these halters as sleek as possible. And I think to get that sleek look, you'd wanna do two crosses of a four strand round braid and then a crown knot. In my opinion, that combination is going to give you the most amount of strength while being the least obnoxious. But also just keep in mind your own personal skill level and do what you can. It's not the end of the world if there's a little bulk to your halter. Now for our second piece, we're gonna wanna thread two strands through the braid and then we'll wrap two strands around the braid. So just like a normal pull tie loop, when you make your loop, I want you to go from your knotted side through your braid to the unknotted side. This is gonna add to that sleekness look so you're not having two knots right on top of each other. They kind of have their own space. Once you get your strands situated, you're gonna wanna do, again, at least two crosses. I did three on this time just to check for the bulk. And then this is the side I did the overhand knot on. This is gonna finish off this section of our halter. So you can go ahead and cut and burn and press everything down with your pliers. Remember our fire safety first though, because I don't want any of you accidentally catching your bedrooms on fire. If you don't wanna mess with fire, just do overhand knots. And again, snug them down like your life depends on it. And when you think you're done, snug them down even more. Then you can just cut it and leave it. You don't even have to burn it. So here is the end result of that. You can see the different sizes in the knots and you can see like on that crown knot how far away it is from the rest of the braid. I'm not a huge fan of that personally, but it, whatever. Now for our last section, we're moving on to our pull strap. And I am a huge fan of long pull straps. So you guys can take some creative liberties here if you don't want a long pull strap. I'm gonna recommend doing three strands at six and a half feet each and starting off center by about six inches. Braid out eight inches of a three strand flat braid and then double it over and make sure it works with the type of clip you have. I know there's a few different styles of clips out there and the whole point of this is to be easy. So you wanna double check that this is gonna work for the clip you end up getting. Bring all six strands together into a braid of your choice. I did a double up three strand flat braid and I'd recommend braiding it out for at least least 24 inches. Um, again, I like a long pole strap, so I would, if it was for me, I'd go all the way to 30, 32, but I think 24 would be enough to get you where you need to be without having too much extra rope on the other side of your halter. Finish your braid in your preferred method, tie it onto your halter, check that the clip works, and there you have it, a quick clip mule tape halter. 
thank you guys for watching as always if you found this video helpful like subscribe maybe share with a friend if you have any questions leave them in the comments and i'll do my best to get back to you um quick disclaimer though and no hate to those of you that asked but i'm not doing your math for you i draw the line there <laughs>